we talked about um, color mixing. You know, we have our primary and secondary and tertiary colors. We talked about color bias. And we also now want to talk about a motif because that's what we're going to do. We're going to create a motif that goes into each of the different sections. A motif is simply an, an image or a design that is repeated. Um, in our color wheel, it's actually going to be called, it's radial symmetry, meaning that it's the same all the way around. Okay, so let me grab that and show you how to do that. Okay, so I have, I did about three or four different thumbnails, um, and so this is the one I like the best. I'm going to cut this out with a Zacto blade. Now, my Zacto blade is not very sharp, but, um, and I don't even know if you guys are allowed to use a Zacto blade in your classroom, but if you are, um, just use a nice sharp blade. And with Zacto blades, you leave your hand at the top and you cut, believe it or not, you cut towards you. That sounds counterintuitive, but um, you do not try cutting away with a Zacto knife. That would be bad. Um, and you just take your time and, and um, be smart about it. Don't do anything crazy. If you don't want to use a Zacto knife, um, then you can use scissors and you can do a simpler design. Um, it's all kind of up to you and your ability level and what you're comfortable with, okay? So, also when you're cutting, if it doesn't, if it's not exactly on the line, it's not going, it's not going to matter, right? As long as it's the same, because what you're doing is you're creating a template to use for your motif on your color wheel. One thing you want to make sure of before you start going crazy with designs is that it fits into the section of color wheel that you're using. So, for example, this is the size of your color wheel. You want to make sure it fits either you can have it go longer and skinnier if you want. You can create more than one motif. I had somebody who did turtles all the way down. Um, a lot of different ideas. I'm just going to do one just to keep it simple. I've also had kids do uh, stars, multiple stars. So they did some big stars and some small stars, which was kind of cool. But they did it the same in each section of the color wheel because we want to we want to have that nice repetition. And we want to have the radial symmetry that we talked about earlier. Alrighty. So there we go. That's my motif. Now, remember on your color wheel, I'm going to get rid of this. Make sure when you're cutting, if you're cutting with a Zacto blade, put it away right as soon as you finish blade size down, and also um, make sure you cut on something like a piece of cardboard or a self-healing mat or something like that. Okay, so your color wheel doesn't have these dark lines on it. Mine does so that you can see what I'm doing. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up in my color wheel, and I can see through without using a light board. Um, if you have a light board, go ahead and use it. That's awesome. So again, I'm drawing dark. I have, I have a soft lead pencil too. Um, you guys can use a harder lead pencil like 2B or 2H. Make sure you have a sharp pencil. And what you're going to do is you're going to create this same image or motif all the way around your color wheel. So I'm going to stop talking and just let you watch. Okay, so now I have my motif done. 
Again, you guys, you're going to draw lightly. But if I draw lightly, you're not going to be able to see what I'm doing. So I just want to reiterate that again because these dark lines are not good. This is not what you want yours to look like. You want yours to be very light, um, lightly drawn. So anyway, now we're going to look at the color wheel and we're going to label these. And you're going to label very, very lightly. So I'm going to start with yellow. I'm just going to do a Y there. I'm going to do Y-O. And um, so a lot of students are like, oh, I don't need to do that. Uh, I got it. I'm not going to do that one green. Um, but uh, once you start <laughs> going, you're, you know, it can get messed up pretty easily. So just take a second. You guys really lightly label these. Also, it's weird because it's not exactly uh, the same as as this kind of a color wheel because it's, it's more at a different kind of angle, okay? So anyway, you've got that. So now I have my motif done. I have my color wheel labor, labeled. We've talked about um, color bias and we have our paint. Hopefully yours is dry by now. And what you're gonna do is you're going to start uh, painting, okay? So, I'm going to start with yellow. Now, when you're using your primary colors, yellow, blue, and red, it doesn't really matter which of the colors that you use. Personally, I think this, uh, the cad red medium is a little bit truer red, and I think that the um, pale yellow is a little bit truer yellow, and I actually think the cobalt blue is a little truer blue. So that's what I'm going to use for my primaries, um, but that is, it's okay if you use a different one. So I'm going to start with my pale yellow. Okay, and um, just so you guys know, with watercolor, you never rinse this out because you want this to dry and then you're gonna wet it to um, paint with it again. This area right here, you wipe out with just a wet paper towel, okay, with watercolor paint. This is just with watercolor. You don't do that with acrylic paint, but. So anyway, I'm gonna get some pale yellow and then I'm just gonna start painting. Now, when I paint, um, I'm gonna have the tip of the brush in the tip of my design, okay? And then I'm just gonna kind of push the brush up and lift when I get to the end, okay? And you wanna be, keep this nice and neat, okay? Now, when you're done, my lines are so dark, I'm gonna go over it with a Sharpie. You can choose to do that if you want. Um, if you don't want to, you can um, just wait until the paint is completely, completely dry and er, gently, gently erase the lines, okay? Uh, you can actually erase a watercolor paint, so you know. So I wouldn't go too crazy with trying to erase. If you keep your lines light enough, it should be fine regardless. And um, you wanna always add water to your paint to make it thin enough so that it's easy to work with, but so that it's not watery. So you want it to be nice and vibrant, like the way this is looking, um, and not too watery, but you also don't want it to be glumpy and too thick because you won't be able to get those nice clean lines.
Remember, these lines will not be that dark so that when you go back and erase, it's gonna be this beautiful color wheel motif. So have fun with this, this is a fun, fun lesson.